Welcome to the podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time, a Cat Source production. In this episode, we discuss content creation. This episode is brought to you by the Cat Source brand podcast. Podcast is your podcast production team. You know how many business leaders need help communicating their story through audio? That's what we do. Podcast strategy, creation, and distribution for business leaders. This provides opportunities, relationships, and a platform for you and your business. Why do we do this? Because at Podcast, we exist to help you create and share amazing content through podcasts. Learn more by visiting podcast.com. What is holding business professionals back from creating content? John Priori, content marketer at CASCM, joins me in this chat to discuss this all-important topic. When you're talking to business owners, mm-hmm. people that are making decisions right now, what's their biggest reluctancy to saying creating content? I think I want to do it. I've been told I have to do it. I read all my trade magazines. I hear from other people. But for whatever reason, there's business owners out there and they're just reluctant. What do you think is like the number one reason why? The number one reason is they don't know what to talk about. So they don't think that their story has any relevance to someone that doesn't know them or care about them. So they're saying, I know everyone's telling me I have to be doing this. I'm reading up these articles about how I have to be on the Facebook, or that's what they like to use a lot, the Facebook. The Facebook, like, like the original name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Facebook. Or you know how I need to be creating content for my firm or my agency or whatever business they're in. But they're saying, my story means nothing to... Susie down the street who doesn't care about me, who doesn't care about my agency, and it's not going to directly bring in business. So those go hand in hand. So it's A, finding the story to talk about that they don't think they can pull out of themselves, which as you know, it's hard to do. It's hard to look at yourself and be like, I actually have something consistently to put out there that people are going to care about to listen to or to get out there. But where I come in is it's not for everybody. It's for Jack, who's 35, who you want to talk to and you talk to every day, and this is going to help him get in your door, create opportunities for you. So that's that's the quote-unquote convincing factor in it. It's, hey, business owner, you're not creating your story for everybody. You're creating it for the person you want to be in front of. And they do care about whatever you're talking about because if you're a New England Patriot fan and so is the guy down the street, he's going to talk to you just because you're a Patriot fan. And that has nothing to do with yourself and your story. That's just you talking about what you want to talk about anyways. So the first thing that would be, that's the main one, is that they don't know what to say. There has to be some sort of block. Yeah. So this is where like mental, the mental side of it comes in. It's like, because it's difficult to say, I'm going to talk about this. What's everyone going to think? And no doubt that is a hurdle. Yeah. That is a major hurdle that people have yeah. to get over. Well, for example, last week we went to one of our clients. They run a big financial firm here in Charlotte. And they're starting a podcast, storytelling around themselves, the culture of their agency. And ultimately, their end goal is to get better advisors in the door, regardless of whatever happens. And someone in the room was talking about, hey, you're not going to appeal to everybody that's a problem. And I was like, oh, that's not a problem. Because if they don't enjoy your story, they don't enjoy who you are and what you guys are about here, they're not going to be a good advisor here anyways. Yeah. So that's, and so who in the room, not naming names or anything like that, like what type of person is saying that? It was a CMO type it was, person? No, it was a compliance officer. A compliance yeah, person yeah. saying, yeah. we're going to be talking to people that they're going to be turned off by this, yeah. basically. Yeah. Which yeah. is the person that was never going to work with you anyway, because they're going to come in here, see your culture, and be like, I'm turned off by it. Exactly. I'm going to go take a job down the street. That's the second best thing. The second best thing is someone saying, I don't like this agency, so I'm not going to work on it or work with them because you're not paying to onboard them. You're not paying to train them. They're not wasting time, and you can hire someone else who wants to be there. So that goes back to the whole, they don't like my story. That's fine. They don't right. like your story, then they're not going to ever be a good client. Be a good advisor, be a good whatever you may. You always say that all the time. Yeah. You know, it's there's only so much time in the day to say, oh, this person wants to grab coffee, go to lunch, have a meeting. If they would have been able to spend some time checking out the my LinkedIn page, my podcast, my article, and they could have said, no, no, and no. I don't like what anything that he stands for. I don't like what he's saying. Well, guess what? No, we don't have to waste that hour and a half at lunch trying to get to that stage. We cut all that time back. 
how much time did you save? And what is time? Time is money. And you mm. saved all that. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's totally it. I do think another, and you're absolutely right. I don't even know what to talk about. Then even if I do know what to talk about and then getting over that hurdle of putting it out there, then it does come into the time component of how am I going to do these things? How am I going to, now I have to create time to think to come up with ideas, to get creative in my day. I think there's two things for that. One is, well, that's why marketing companies exist. That's why you have content creators that can help with that process. They can make that process easier. Like you're talking about someone had, they might have the original idea or a thought of what they would like to do. They need someone to help kind of get it through that creative process, right? I think that's a huge part of it. The other thing that I would say is we get so caught up in our day. If you're a business owner, a leader, a person in sales, any person in business, you're so caught up in the paperwork, the things that you have to do that the creative part of your day is so important. And I would encourage any business owner, if anyone's like, what's one thing I should be doing that I'm not doing today? I said, you should start creating something. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. You might be drawing pictures. You might be taking pictures. You might be doing a podcast. You might be writing blogs. I don't know if it even matters what you do, that if you just get creative, because it makes your day, it makes your business, it makes those mundane tasks that you have to do so much better. I think it makes you better for your business, for yourself, for your company, for your family, for whoever it is that is around you, that I think creativity is this thing of positive. There's a positiveness to it. Now, it doesn't mean it's not hard. It is hard. Like setting up new podcasting equipment isn't like just flick a switch. No, no, no. There's some complications to it and you have to work through it. And sometimes you want to bang your head against the wall because like, I don't understand what I'm doing. But that's all a part of it that I think more business leaders, business professionals, salespeople, people at a company, if they can get creative in their day, I think it's huge. I would encourage anybody. You know, we tell Katie, she's in graphic design. Can't be in your box. Go for a walk around the lake and take some pictures while you're out there. It'll spark something. I don't know what that something is, but it'll give you some level of creativity or when you go back to work, it kind of your mind is again, I don't, I'm not the one that writes the book on what does that do to your brain and all that. And that's for someone else to do, but I just know that it works. Well, so then what would you say to that business owner that tells you, I know I don't have the time to do this? Well, there's two things. One is if someone is so adamant that they do not have the time to do it and will not invest the time to do it, that's fine. So we've seen that, right? Being we have an insurance business, we know what it's like to work with, to talk to people that are living 10, 20, 50 years in the back, in the back time, right? And that's fine. And maybe they'll get there. And we've seen, you've seen it, you know, one of the companies just talked about it. They are in that space and it did take them time to get there. That process of, oh, I want to start creating content. Oh, I want to have a podcast is about a three year turn when it, how long it took them to get to that point. So one is, Continue just be in touch with them, send them stuff if they're interested, but it's a yes or no. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. I'm not here to overly convince you that it's the way to go. I can tell you my experiences. I can tell you why I think you should do it. But if you're adamant against doing it, then don't do it. However, if there is that level of opening and you are interested in it and you would like to try it, then I would say to try it. I would say to try it in very small pieces. I don't say, like we always tell people, we, this was very common, say five years ago, people would want to start a blog or they would start a blog. And what happened? They would do it. Be very consistent. First month, first two. It's no different than going to the gym. I did it. I was just killing it. And then what happened? The last, and then two years passed by, you look back and the last blog they wrote was two years ago, a year ago. So it actually, they, they overshot themselves. I'm going to write eight blogs a month. Well, then you did eight blogs a month until you ran out of gas and you've written zero blogs over the last two years. And, you can, and then people see that. Yeah. So now I see that and say, okay, you say you have content, you say you have social media, you say you have all these things, but you actually don't actually have it. Now, don't do it if you don't have any good ideas because just putting crap out there is still crap and that actually could be worse than anything else. But if you truly believe in it and put it out there, so I would say it's one, don't convince the unconvincible. Two is you probably do have some time to do a little bit of creative work in your day and just do that. And the third thing is get a team of people to help you with that process that genuinely cares about what you're trying to do and wants to help you succeed in that. Now it's not, that's easier said than done. We, I could say we're the company for that. There's a lot of companies. I'm just saying that it, you got to find the group that truly does that type of work. Just going hiring a freelance editor or a writer or a writing company doesn't mean they truly understand what you are all about and what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go. That's the difference. I think where we come in is we actually 
get in it with you. And we help you come up with ideas. And we go through this. And we have different types of people here. It's not, we're all creatives. We're all this. We're not. We're all different people. You're very different than me and Shane and Katie and Scott. I mean, you know, Scott's the one who set up all the technical stuff. He's not the guy that's going to sit in your office and come up with the idea. But he can make the idea sound better because he can get the technical aspects about it. So I do think it's important to then partner up with the right organization. And I say it in the sense that we do this. So all of these things that, w- that I'm saying are all the things that we've done here. So we're not trying to like say we haven't done these things. This is what we do in our own company. We say, if you're interested in it and you would like to do it, we would love to help you do it. Why? Because we love helping business leaders, entrepreneurs, founders, whatever, come up and create amazing content because honestly, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we get paid for it. We get paid well for it. But at the same time, it's like, that's what we enjoy doing. We love building businesses in that way. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd say from, from my end, there's nothing I love more than seeing that final product of we went through the sales process. We went through, hey, we're, we will be a good fit with each other. We'll help you tell your story. Let's dive deep into who you are and get on that same page. And then the whole strategy components of building your brand, building your platforms, and then to that final point of this is live. Whether you're launching a podcast and you see it in iTunes or you're building a website and you see all the content come together and then someone else coming to them and saying, wow, I see your story and I see what you're all about now. And we were a part on that back end with you. That's incredible to see. It's a great experience. Yeah. We had a cl- one of our first clients and he was writing blog articles. We did a website for him. We did blog articles. We started doing email newsletters for him. We did some social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that. I could say what all the different things, it was all about the story. It was pulling the story out and hearing like, you have somewhat of a story he had at the beginning, but the story got better and better and better as we kind of really dug into him. Like, that's the story they want to hear. That So do that. So he starts putting it out there and it's hard to tell right away. You don't know. You know if it's good or not. He knows if it's good or not. But what does everybody else think? So there's just that time. So then it gets out there and it takes a little bit of time. He shows up to a meeting. He lives out in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Comes to Miami, Florida, meets different people. Obviously, they had seen his stuff. He said he got stopped in the hallway so many times congratulating him, telling him how good his content was, how good his blogs were. Couldn't wait to read the next one, that type of stuff. That was like, it doesn't mean that someone's going to walk up to you and say, I want to buy what you're selling. That's the thing that people get. There's this misconception on. Just because you create a podcast, you put it out there, someone's going to turn around and buy your stuff. It's not how it works. This guy was showing up and was being told, and it was like a little bit of an inspiration back to him to say, man, this is working. People were excited about it. Like got him, got his juices going, say, I can do more of this type of stuff. And I think that's really important to not get lost in what the dollars are, but it was once it gets out there, people will talk about it. And it might just, I always say, you only need one real fan. And that fan might be the someone in your office. It could be like my aunt in California loves our stuff. She's my aunt, but it's kind of cool. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. It, well, there's like that, there's another factor too that that we never even really talk about. It's the the priceless factor of becoming a better communicator and a better storyteller that helps you in all aspects of your life. Not even just you post this to Instagram and it gets twenty likes, and that's what we get a lot. So it's like, wow, how is this doing analytics wise? Well, this employee who wants to come work for you, and you are now having an interview with him. You're not talking with him. You don't even realize that all the content that you're creating helps you in that interview because you're now telling stories in the interview. You're communicating with them better because now you're telling your story to people and you're not afraid to be out there. So it just helps you in all aspects of your life and what we've seen with ourselves, both from myself, from being on podcasts, from writing, from getting involved and talking to CEOs and business owners and yourself. And I know you've seen it too from doing your podcast and you can take that into different meetings and same with our clients. So they'll talk about I had this client meeting today and I talked about my podcast. I talked about my story and really it just helped myself communicate my story better, which leads to better relationships, sales, all around that personal development factor, which we don't even touch on too often. Yeah. We started to more recently. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, hit it square in the head because it's like, you put a mic in front of me Mm. about three, four years ago. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to say. So I get it. Like when someone says, what am I going to say? And it doesn't have to be a podcast. It could be a blog, put a piece of paper or put Microsoft Word in front of me and say, you have to write 500 words or 2000 words about it. What do you say? So going back to your original point, which is the true thing, but that is the, like, you can say something, you have something to say. Everybody we deal with has these stories and you've seen it. So someone might come in here and they might see, oh, this is pretty boring. Not really. All of a sudden then we get a little in depth with it. It's just amazing what can come from it. 
that's been the, because I've always thought, I was like, okay, so a lot of our in-depth podcasts might be 45 minutes to an hour, hour plus. And I always thought, maybe we can make them shorter. People like shorter. People like snippets. So we've done snippets, right? We'll pull two minute clip out. This clip is about whatever. It's so like the first thing you said on the podcast today, that's a clip. That's a three minute clip about the number one reason why business owners or business leaders or whoever don't create content, right? Because they don't want to talk about. However, if the, the, the going back to the, the, the whole podcast as a whole is needed, you don't have to listen to the whole thing if you don't want. But to get to the depth, you can't just sit down with someone for five minutes and get to the depth of that story. You got to start somewhere and then you got to kind of go through this whole conversation. And it just is a, it's a better way to communicate because no one, I don't like it when I sit down and it's all surface level conversation. You go to a cocktail party and you got to talk to 50 different people there. And all you ever do is what do you do? Where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. It's surface stuff. It's to me, it's boring. Now, I'm not saying that other people could like it and that could be their total. You could create a podcast around the surface level stuff. Let's just talk about, just John, tell me where you're from. What team do you like? Why did you go to school at Western Carolina? And then real quick, but never like, because once you talk about Western Carolina, now we can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then I can find out things about Western Carolina I never knew. And where is it? And all these different things. And that's where it comes in. You become, like you said, a better communicator. And that's what it's all about. So Katie, when she was coming here and she's like, you know, you get these interview questions and it was a good question. And I've been asked all sorts of questions and I've asked questions. What are you looking for? at this company. When you want to hire someone, what is it that you're looking for? There's a lot of things. I said, the number one thing is we want communicators. So I want someone who can write, so can talk on the phone, who can speak in person, who's very presentable, all those things. Can you do all those things? And can you write in all those formats? And I'm not saying you have to be perfect today because I'm not perfect today. But can you do those types of things? That is it. It's communication. And the more you do it, like you saw it, when you started, you came here, you weren't a, the, you weren't a great writer. But you shouldn't be. You're coming out of school and they write a different way. It doesn't mean you're bad. It just means you got a lot of work to do. So then you write a little bit. You're putting it out there. And now you're like, oh, wow, people might read this. My friends might read this. My colleagues might read this. It better be good and it better get better. And I think that's kind of no different than if we're doing a podcast, I could bring out the three different mics we've had in here. We had our first mic. We just got a mic. It was like 20 bucks. It worked. Then we got another mic. We upped our game. It was like $100, invested in some software and all that. It was more. Now we have these new mics in here. So it's that's technology, but it's the same thing as like, you're always trying to refine and better your game, but you start somewhere. You start at the basic level. You're not going to start and all of a sudden have like NBC Studios show up and like record your, your session. Right. So like, what if we were just kind of talking now, yeah, yeah. but um, if we did like our intro or even just parts of episodes from like episode one to episode, whenever we got the new mic mm -hmm. and then to now, and that in itself is a story of you don't have to start with the best stuff. You don't even have to start with being on iTunes. You can right. start with being on... We could even get to when we were on... Um, Anchor. Anchor. Like, you don't have to start where everyone else is. You can pull is. your phone out and just record Literally. it. And I get it. Yeah. Sound quality matters. If I hear it, I'm like, oh man, I don't want to listen to this episode. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, no, you're 100% right. There's... I've been thinking about this a lot and you, you, you said it right away, which is kind of funny, which I agree with you. I didn't know what necessarily what you're going to say, but what is the number one reason why people don't create content is they don't know what to talk about. That in and of itself, if, you have, if you're of a business or you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, you could be by yourself, doesn't matter. You're a sales professional. I don't know what to talk about. I get you to get to that point of now you know what to talk about. That's incredible value. You couldn't have done that. Now, you, maybe you could have done it. Maybe you would have gotten there. Maybe there's someone else. I feel like we have that ability to get you comfortable to say, I know, and that's in and of itself, product, something we can help people with, something that people will pay us for. Yeah. Well, no, that's it. Because even if they have that thought of, here's this general thought of what I want to talk about, but we help them narrow down or they have three things they want to talk about. And we say, hey, do this one, the one, one of the three because of X, Y, Z. And then we see it play out. So it's, yeah. even if they do have their idea... It's helping them choose one, helping them dive deep into it and seeing which one's going to have the longevity, which one is going to hit the most, and which one do they enjoy talking about? Because if they're doing this, like you said, they're going to have to continue to do this for a while where it's not going to really mean anything if they do seven episodes and then stop. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, so... Well, there's, a, there's an evolution to it and we've lived it multiple times over and we've seen other people live it. So we, I think we're, we have the expertise or whatever the word is on it. And I don't know if it's a timeline or if it's a circle. 
because it's like a timeline is like, it just keeps on going forever. A circle, a lot of times is um, you're at a starting point and you end up back there at some point. So it might be a combination of the two. It might be a graphic design that we create to say, you're at a point, zero is like, I have no clue what to talk about. Right. I'm not even interested in doing it. That's the point. Then the point right after that is, I could see some, some value in doing it, but I have no clue what to talk about. So I think that's point two. But at least you're like off the start, starting line. So you haven't even started before. Now you've started. So now what? Okay. So now it's like you go through these iterations. And then the first iteration is, okay, I'm going to put myself out there. But now there's this fear. The fear of what's everyone going to say? And that's a big one. That's, there's a long gap, I think, between that and the next step. So there's all these different steps along the way. So then you're like, I don't even give a shit anymore. I'm putting it out there. But you'll run into situations where you're kind of like, maybe you just, there's like these little things behind you that like kind of pull you back. Just like someone like just pulling your shirt back, saying, no, 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 come back here. You know, you're, you're actually a little scared right now because you're, now you have a podcast before you're just blogging. Now it's your voice and you sound stupid. Yeah. You sound like an idiot. Oh, yeah. You don't even know what you're talking about. And so it's like your head starts to be like, oh my God, who, this is annoying. This is really bad. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and then no one can argue with it because it's your voice. You right. can't be like, all right, my editor put that in there. Because like, those right. are scapegoats. Right. You can say, my editor put that in there or that it's wasn't getting to me. the point of saying something stupid and being like, hey, whatever. It, yeah. <laughs> is what it is. Now yeah. you say something stupid in the sense of it didn't make sense. Obviously, there's ways to get super controversial. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where you, you know, you slip up a lot or whatever that might be. And we all do it. But I think that is a process for anybody to deal with and to almost like, I'm not saying we're counselors, but to counsel someone on. It's real stuff. It's a hundred percent real stuff. It's no different than someone saying they're gonna be a public speaker and they're stage fright. It's one of the biggest fears that exists today. And there's been studies on that to say people are more afraid of that than they are of dying. Wow. Which is great. Yeah. You know, when it's, you know what? Because you have to live that. You actually have to be there and you're up there and people are looking. And that's a totally different experience. Mm. And we don't do a ton of that here. Does it, does it mean we should? Possibly. I don't know. You know, then you still have to pick your time and I get it. But there's a lot of decisions to be made along the process, but there's something there and helping people think through it. But if they're stuck on that starting point and they're just not interested at all with that, then I get it. Then they're not going to be interested in with right. it at all. And we'll, you know, at some other point we'll get there. So yeah. One of the best things about CadSource is having the opportunity to work with John Priori on a daily basis, and then having the ability to bring his thoughts to you in this podcast platform so you can take in what John says. If you want to learn more about John, send him an email at john at cadsource.com or find him on LinkedIn. If you want to connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn or contact me on Twitter at Eric underscore Kaz. Thank you for listening to this CadSource podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time. Until next time, we're out of here. Win all in, play my cards right. A BNT one blackjack all night. Roll the dice, let it ride. This episode is brought to you by the Cas Source brand Podcast. Podcast is your podcast production team. You know how many business leaders need help communicating their story through audio? That's what we do. Podcast strategy, creation, and distribution for business leaders. This provides opportunities, relationships, and a platform for you and your business. Why do we do this? Because at Podcast, we exist to help you create and share amazing content through podcasts. Learn more by visiting podcast.com.